Our scripture today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went into their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. And in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. The word of the Lord. I feel too far away from you. I'm going to come down. All right, that feels a little better. Dear friends, we made it. We have gotten through the season of, of wondering and contemplation and prayerful consideration that is Advent to tonight, Christmas Eve. And I know that can bring around a lot of different emotions. Uh, show of hands, is anyone feeling excited tonight? All right, we got a fair amount of excitement. How about happy? Is anyone feeling happy? Oh, even more, wow, this is great. And how about, and you can be honest, I'm going to be honest too, is anyone maybe feeling just a little bit tired? Yeah. Yeah. That is my Christmas confession to you all. I am so happy to be here, and also, I am tired. Between going to the stores and buying gifts and wrapping gifts and sending out gifts and trying to catch my friends and baking cookies and figuring out how I'm going to get from my home in New York City to my mom's home, which is here, and then running errands and cleaning and decorating and still trying to do my job. I'm tired. And that's leaving out just everything that's happening in the world. Things that have been going on for a long time, and maybe some newer things. All of that, both the worldly and the individual, can weigh on us, can make us tired, overwhelmed, exhausted. But that's the beauty of Christmas Eve. For this moment, we get to stop and rest and consider the wonder that is the birth of Jesus Christ. For whether we are in the time when he was born or in this moment right now, there is great wonder in his birth story, the kind of wonder that can help with our weariness. Now, as we know, that story starts 
with Mary and Joseph. Obviously, a birth story would start with parents. But in today's reading, it actually starts with something a little less exciting. A census. As some of you may know, a census, in our time anyway, is when they come around every 10 years and they send a survey in the mail or someone comes to your house and they ask you questions about your racial ethnic background or who lives with you or, or how old you are, things like that, in an attempt to figure out where resources need to be allocated. It's the government's attempt to try and find out where people live and what they might need. It's an attempt to help us. The census in today's scripture, however, is not that. Emperor Augustus, Caesar Augustus, had no interest in helping people. He was considered angry, violent, tyrannical. And his census, rather than give resources, was meant to take resources away. As he controlled all of the Roman Empire, he wanted people to come back to their homes so they could pay him taxes. Taxes on their houses, taxes on their servants, on their animals, and in particular, taxes on themselves. Every individual had to pay simply because they existed. And what's more, every individual had to pay the same amount of money. It didn't matter if you were a wealthy landowner with lots of animals or a poor carpenter with his pregnant fiance. And if you have that money, it's a minor inconvenience, but it's not so bad. But if you don't, it is devastating. And it can feel like you are being punished simply because you don't have enough. But Caesar Augustus didn't care about that. Caesar Augustus was concerned with the money it would bring in and the power it would give him. You see, back in those days, the leaders of Rome were considered above the average person. In fact, they were considered gods. Caesar Augustus was adopted by Julius Caesar, who was considered a god, which made Caesar Augustus a son of God. But he is not who we are celebrating tonight. We are here to celebrate Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came not to take away from people, not to oppress them, but to be cared for by them and to care for them. He came not in a great bit of power and might, but as a lowly baby the most helpless that one can be, in need of family and community for care. And as we've, as we've read the text of Mary's song, the Magnificat, we know that there are great things in store for what he will do, that he will bring about righteousness and mercy and a more just world. And all of that is coming in the package of a tiny newborn child. How wonderful is that? And then we get to the next part of our story with the shepherds, which if you would believe that there was a group of people poorer and more lowly and more outcast than Mary and Joseph, it's the shepherds. You see, shepherds, as you may know, wandered through the fields and the wilderness with their animals, usually things like sheep or cows or goats. And they took care of them, they looked after them, they found them when they were lost, they helped heal them when they were sick. This is something that you would consider noble and, and wonderful, but during their time period, they were not seen as such. They were seen as unkempt, as ceremonially unclean. In fact, they were even seen as untrustworthy. They were forced to the margins. They are the first marginalized group mentioned in the book of Luke because they are not seen at the same level as others. 
And yet there they sat, looking over their flock, because during that time of year, it was the season for the birthing of lambs. And so they had to stay up all night, literally waiting for a birth announcement. And they got one, although maybe not the one they were expecting. Now friends, remember, when Mary found out about the birth of Jesus, one angel came to her. When Joseph found out, he was dreaming and an angel came to him. But these shepherds, those who are seen as unclean, as unkempt, as outcast, they don't get one angel. They get a choir of angels. They get a whole heavenly host. And what's more, these, one, these folks who are considered untrustworthy, well, they are trusted first with this beautiful, amazing, awe-inspiring news. And what's more, they are given instructions on how to find the baby so that they can see him first. Those who are considered most lowly are lifted up in the highest honor. How wonderful is that? And of course, the angels, when they gave their message to the shepherds, they let them know this. That message is for all people. All people. Meaning that when we read it and we hear it, we are part of those people. And yes, things today are different in a lot of ways from things back then, but also, they aren't. There are people today who put their own power over the needs of others. There are people who believe that money is what makes you worth something, and not that you are worth something simply for being born. There are systems in place that push people to the outsides because they can't see the image of God in them. And we are still, unfortunately, in times of harm and turmoil and even violence, including in the place where Jesus was born. And yet, and yet, when we hear this story, we are brought into the wonder that is in it. And therefore, we are called, as all people, to seek that wonder ourselves. And so, friends, I ask you this. Where is it that we find wonder today? Perhaps it is in the faces and, and smiles and eyes of the children around us. Maybe it's in the community that we build when we come together, not to just celebrate someone holy, but to create something holy. Maybe it's in our hearts as we go out into the world, shining the light of Christ like that star in the sky. Friends, we may be weary, we may be in a world that makes us exhausted and tired. But every time we remember this story, we remember the wonder and magic that brings about a more just world, a more loving world, all because of our Savior being born. And so let us take a moment to remember the wonder and to seek it in the world so that this love and light of Christ may shine on all of God's people. Amen.